so in today's session so i will i will pick it up from where we have last uh, finished it so far we have gone through that what is the basic tm terminology what does we why do we require a tm the, uh, the big softwares like tm why do it require why, what is the requirement which company has what is transportation planning and why do we require this bigger software uh, and how these softwares would be able to help to justify that they would be able to generate enough uh, uh, decision making and enough uh, uh, value they would be able to bring it up in terms of the cost optimization and transportation optimizations so basically we try to understand what is transportation planning and why it is required we went ahead into the terminologies we try to understand who would be the shipper who would be the consigner who would be the consignee who would be the lsp uh, who would uh, uh, who would be the carriers uh, and uh, what do we understand with the different con contracts, loads, or shipment types? The basic terminology which we use in our um, uh, in our transport management, that what we have tried to understand. Then we jumped into the different TM products and what are the different TM products are available. Okay, uh, in uh, starting from TPVS, LE is there, then TM is there, LETR is there, then Emirate TM is there, then standalone TM is there. Okay, so the multiple different scenarios we have gone through. We have gone through that who has who want to learn the TM that what I've gone through. Then we went into the architecture. We went into the deployment option. Uh, if we need to implement TM as a standalone, what is the options are there? If you want to go with embedded TM, what is the option are there? If you want to make embedded TM as a hub system, don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP video. Uh, as a transportation hub system, what are the options are there? In which condition, what kind of deployment option we should select it? That I have gone through in the last session with the detailed discussion. That if the scenario is this in the different countries, within the same countries, different vertical of businesses there, what kind of transport solution we can uh, put it in front of our client, which they can select, whether they should go ahead with putting one system, one box. It can be a TM 9.6 if you are doing it now. It has to be S4 HANA TM, that's centralized S4 HANA TM box, uh, S4 HANA embedded TM box where only the TM activities are happening. Or it can be uh, also a scenario where basically uh, your ERP system, S4 HANA system itself, you will um, uh, activate the embedded TM scenario in that. So both kind of different deployment options are available. What is the benefits? What is the pros? What is the cons? In which condition? In which case? Which one we should recommend? That one we had a detailed discussion in the last session. Okay, then we went ahead into. Then when we then we went ahead into the uh, SAP uh, TM process that how the end to end process would be happening for outbound logistics, starting from sales order delivery freight unit creations, freight planning. So we had this discussion of the process that uh, from SAP, we'll be having a sales orders. From sales order, we'll be creating a delivery. With delivery, we'll see the automated freight units would be created. For that, we'll be uh, putting a freight order. And in the freight order, we'll be going ahead into the carrier assignments. We'll do the carrier assignments. And then we will we'll be proceeding ahead with the uh, freight order execution. Okay. And then we'll do the post goods issue and uh, we'll do the freight settlement document with the freight settlement document. When we'll be posting the freight settlement document, our service PO uh, and uh, uh, service entry sheet would be automatically created. Confirmation of the service PO would also happen and your uh, GR document would also be generated with the confirmation of the service PO. Final step would be to post an invoice document so that we can pay to the vendor. So that is the part where MM integration would be coming. This is the part where SD integration would be coming. So that is the end-to-end -end process we have discussed, right? Now I would be jumping ahead. We would be jumping ahead today in the system. So what, what kind of things we'll do? We will try to do this scenario in the system first with the data which I will give you, okay? So I would be giving you the... Uh, uh, Say, uh, that this is the plant we need to use. This is the company code you need to use. This is the carrier. This is the customer. And we need to run that scenario. So that uh, with that standard set of data, we'll try to run one quick vanilla scenario. Okay. So the idea uh, to run the vanilla scenario is that at least you would be having a 
minimum flow which is required that overview you would be getting it then post that what we would be doing it we would be jumping into in tomorrow session and we'll start our configuration from the scratch not tomorrow we don't have a session tomorrow next uh, sunday next sunday we will be jumping into the uh, scratch we'll start from the company code creation uh, material creation will first configure our uh, SD scenario and then we'll start the uh, enterprise structure configuration. We'll have a detailed discussion on what is TM enterprise structure, what is this required. And then from there, we'll do a detailed jump into the discussion of TM master data. So then we'll do again with our own master data, with our own enterprise structure. We'll try to run again a vanilla scenario. Once that part is done, then we'll start jumping into uh, configuration details. And then we'll be also going into the transaction details also because the transaction first time you will see the TM screen, it will look so complex. So many options are there. So many tabs are there. So many drop downs are there. So many statuses are there. So we can easily spend a lot of time onto the single tab. But I want to jump into that tab once you have gone through the one single scenario and then you have gone through some basic configuration. And then basic enterprise structure, basic master data understanding you have, then you would be able to correlate with the standard, standard transaction screens also. At that point of time, when we'll do with our second or third iteration into the process, we'll go into the different variation of the process. Freight order creation also can be done in different variations. So we'll see the different variations. And we will also see, uh, go into the screen details, finding it out what are the different tabs are there each tab, what kind of data would be there. Okay, that's how we would be progressing ahead in this training. So I would be jumping into the system and will show you that how to access. And in between today, what I'm going to do, because I know there are people joining who has never used Fury. And I know that there would be a, a, a you need to do a lot of things into the Fury, some, some basic background and platform of Fury need to be built. So in today's session, when I will be jumping into the Fury, I will also give you some basic background of the Fury, a little bit overview of the Fury, so that you would be able to have a smoothly would be able to do the transaction in Fury. That would also be today's agenda. So today's agenda will try to start the process, will explain the Fury, and will try to finish it till the uh, service PO and service entry sheet creation. Okay, uh, Bharat is asking for SO also freight unit can be created before delivery. Yes, for SO also freight unit can be created. So that is an integration scenario. You can get it created through SO. You can also get it created through delivery. So once our uh, enterprise structure and the master data is completed, not, not the master data, before the master data, when we'll be completing the enterprise structure, the last step of the enterprise structure configuration is integration, the, the logistic in integration, with TM, the inbound integration and outbound integration. At that configuration, we'll be maintaining it, whether SO need to be used or delivery need to be used. At that point, I would be taking you into the detailed discussion. What kind of scenarios can be there where SO would be there, which would be very few. What kind of scenarios would be there where delivery will make sense. We'll have a detailed discussion on that. But yes, from SO also, your uh, freight units can be generated. Okay, you can see here a line which has been mentioned here. It's coming from SO and the freight units is generating. A line is also coming from outside system, from OTR, uh, a freight unit is getting generated. From DTR, the freight unit is getting generated. OTR is uh, order transport request. So if you are having this hub system and you are getting the requirement from the outside different system, so OTR and DTR would be coming it up and based on that, your freight unit would be generated. If in this system you want to do the planning from the sales order, a OTR will come. From this system, if you want to do the planning based on the delivery, a DTR will come. But if it is an embedded system, we are in the same box, you have a, your logistics, SDMM, PP, everything is there in the same box. And in the same box, you have embedded as for HANA TM. In that case, OTR, DTRs would not be requiring it. You have a two option from delivery to freight unit or sales order to freight unit. That is to answer uh, uh, Bharat's question. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. So vendor side, we will uh, create the invoice. Okay. And that till that point we'll be doing. So uh, service PO generation, service entry sheet generation, that part we'll be doing and how this integration will happen. 
how automated service PO service entry sheet would be created and invoice posting. Invoice clearing will not go through, it's the pure finance transaction. Even invoice posting is also a finance transaction, but it has a linkage with TM, so we'll go through that. 